Hi, how do you choose a microphone for home speech recording? Do you actually need a special mic for it? Let's take a look. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a dynamic mic. The first thing about dynamic mics is they are tough. They're really tough and they keep working. The other thing about these microphones is they don't need any power. They will work with no power at all. Having said that, if you just stick this into something like a camera, the preamp on the camera is not very good. So it will hiss because you will need a lot of gain. So really a good preamp is necessary. And uh, I even sometimes use a FET head to boost the audio as much as possible. They are geared towards vocal sounds, so they're much more in, in the middle frequencies. There's no real massive extremes. You don't get the really deep lows. You also don't get really the very high highs. But, you know, my hearing only goes to about 14K, so anything above 14K for me is wasted, to be honest. The better microphones are less sensitive to handling noise as well if you're holding them. For instance, can you hear that? I dread to think what that sounded like, actually. I'm often going on about this, but my room is terrible for sound. I've got just bare walls with a few pictures up around the place, and um, it actually has a lot of reverb. So this microphone for me is actually very good because they're very good at rejecting reverberation. They're very good at holding back other sounds, and you get more of your voice and less of the room. The other thing about dynamic microphones is they don't have to be expensive. This one is a particularly good one, I think. In my opinion, this is a great microphone. It's the Shure SM58, and they retail about £100. You can go up to £400 or more if you want to, but there are also some very good microphones round about the £20 level. So you can get some very, very, very good ones. There's a Red 5 Audio one that I've used. It's very good very cheap, about £30. And there are other ones like um, Behringer's, they come down to about £20. So you can get a very good sounding and cheap microphone. Okay, now some of the bad things. Dynamic microphones tend not to have as wide a frequency response as a condenser. So they won't go right into the deep lows and also they won't quite go as quite as high as a, as a condenser. Having said that, as I've said already, my hearing goes to about 14, 15K and above that's wasted on me. Um, and um, I don't really particularly want the low frequencies for my voice. I don't want a boominess in my voice. So basically they tend to um, concentrate on the mid frequencies more than anything because these are really geared towards vocal sounds. Some people just don't like the sound of these dynamic microphones. They much prefer the, the sound of a condenser. For some people, these sound just too constricted. The thing about dynamic mics is many people don't even consider them. They haven't really looked at their room and they go for something like a large condenser and uh, they pick up nothing but room, room noises, which is what I get. But they are worth a try, especially as you can get them really cheap as well. This is a pretty typical condenser microphone and it uses 48 volts phantom power. Prices for these types of microphones can vary from ridiculously cheap to quite expensive. These microphones are quite a bit more sensitive than a dynamic microphone. And also, by the way, they're very, very prone to wind sounds and these capsules are very delicate. So you need to protect them when you're outside, but they, um, they are actually way more sensitive than a dynamic, which means you can turn your preamp down on your camera or on your recorder and therefore get less preamp noise. Now this microphone has a larger capsule in it. It's not a full-sized uh, condenser, but um, it's sort of between a full-sized and the, and the smaller condensers. And because of that, it can produce a fuller frequency response. It also needs 48 volts phantom power, and they are very, very sensitive. Now this particular microphone is a pretty cheap budget type one. It's a T-bone. And the reason I tend to use this one in my room is because it has a super cardioid pattern and it doesn't pick up so much of the room. One major disadvantage of these kinds of microphones is they can be a little bit sensitive. You certainly don't want to drop one of these and uh, they can be a bit touchy with the atmospherics and um, the amount of humidity. 
So just to compare, this is, uh, as I say, a larger condenser, not the largest, but a larger condenser. By the way, I will go on to show the Rode microphones um, next time, the NT1 and the NT1A. So if you want to hang around, I'll be doing that soon. But this is the sound of a larger condenser type microphone. And this is the sound of a smaller condenser microphone by comparison. Now, if I talk a bit louder, and I talk at arm's length, you may be more aware of what the room sounds like. In comparison to a dynamic, this one is going to pick up a little bit more, although this is actually a supercardioid. By the way, you can also get these in a variable pattern. You can get them so they're switchable between Omni, which is all round, cardioid, which is mostly in front with good rejection from the rear, um, you can get super cardioid like this one and the, the thing about this one is it pushes forward more and rejects more from the side picks up a little bump on the back and that tends to be bassy so you've got to watch where the back end is pointing which is actually why I'm pointing this downwards at the carpet for pointing up at the ceiling it may well start picking up um, reverb from the ceiling so we have quite a few choices of types of microphones to use when we're making films um, for filming outdoors the one I use the most is actually a lavalier and they can be had at really cheap prices the jk044 um, is fantastic and it only costs something like 20 pounds really cheap direct into camera works a treat going up from that you could use a shotgun type mic on the camera my preferred position is not on the camera i would rather have it close to me or placed somewhere near in the shot uh, because they don't work at their best really on camera no mic does so that's an another step then another step is to go to oh, say a small condenser a small condenser microphone uses 48 volt phantom power it's not as convenient uh, because most cameras don't supply 48 volts so you have to use a preamp i'm using a preamp underneath my camera actually this is a tascam uh, preamp that i'm using fantastic gives a lot of power or go to this type of thing which is a larger condenser but the biggest down downer with these is that they are very very good they've got a very wide frequency response but having said that they're so sensitive they will tend to pick up surrounding sounds so there's quite a choice of microphones to choose from really. First of all, decide what you want to use it for, where you want to use it, how much do you want to spend, look at the room, go for it, and then stick with it if you can. The reason I say that is because you go along uh, with one mic, then you get another, then you get another, then you get another, and in the end, before you know it, you've got a cupboard full of microphones most of them not actually being used and you soon find out which ones you like which ones you don't like which ones are the most useful in certain situations and you tend to stick with that rather than uh, use them all um, but it's very easy to end up with a massive cupboard full of microphones that just never get used so before you buy a microphone what i'd suggest you do is take a look at your environment and test the acoustic Decide on the tonal characteristics that you might prefer. Some people prefer a more bassy sound. Some people prefer a more trebly sound. Just it depends what you like and what suits your voice. And a good place to check it out is on YouTube. Check out the good, bad and the ugly. Check them all. You'll get a good idea then. Because you're recording in a quiet environment, the thing is you are going to become much more... Um, aware of self noise of the microphone so you want something that's reasonably quiet and generally i aim at getting something at about minus 80 db if you get something around there and that translates to about minus 14 dba and if you get something around there it's not too bad but you've got to be realistic microphones are not silent one thing I would say about YouTube is if you're listening to microphones on YouTube, don't rely on the self noise tests on them because um, people are using different equipment, different preamps, different recording levels. And it's very difficult to get a real, a true idea of how much noise the microphone actually makes. It might help you when buying a mic to take into mind the, the purpose that you want to use any microphone for actually, because that might save you money as well in the long run. Or you could just buy a really good preamp and a Shure SM7B, and there you are. You're probably gonna get good audio. It's a lot of money though. I hope you enjoyed my little presentation, and if you did, please hit the like button because that really helps me. And also, for you, I hope to see you next time. Don't hit the like button with your microphone though. Cheers for now. Yeah.